today's feature matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz, we have an elimination match between the representatives from CB Law and the LCS. And for fans of both regions, the stakes could not be higher. On one side, Pain Gaming's Titan, CB Law's most internationally experienced player on Brazil's most famed organization, are fighting to keep the hopes of the CB Law alive and advance in the tournament. Just in time! A coming here for Teton! It's clutch! Teton has proven himself to be a confident and aggressive player, but he's going to have to prove himself once more against a team that was one series win away from an undefeated split in the LCS. Chris just goes, yep, I'll try and 1v3, and now Shao doing the same. He has to flash away, get out of there while this Renekton TL running them down. His direct counterpart, Jan, has time and again been a point of power for Team Liquid on the world stage. But the LCS second seed have yet to win a game at this tournament. They are now both playing to remain in Worlds 2024, and Jan is going to have to pull out all the stops in order to shut down Titan and Pengu. matchup in the bot lane and hype matchup overall the battle of the Ooh. americas we've got pain gaming versus team liquid they're both up against elimination we have a very special guest with us from the cb Law broadcast takeshi welcome thank you thank you so much for having me it's a little spoiler for the next year yeah the future, <laughs> the future. <laughs> becoming america's region and here you are yeah. like and jet i don't want to be mean yeah but in the beginning of the day i saw you saying that Nothing different from MZK winning and Team Liquid winning would I did happen say that. today. Yeah. And you are wrong. The first one, right? yeah. Listen, yeah. listen. I'm usually wrong a bit, so I got it out of the way. <laughs> I can't be wrong twice in a row. No. Surely, surely. surely Takeshi, before we go on, uh, it's true that you are the uh, most successful ex CB Low pro player to never win a title. Allegedly. Yeah, I'm like the, I think the Oduamne from Brazil, the oh, guy that got like five <laughs> finals <laughs> straight and didn't get the title. Oduamne is the guy who Okay. I've been playing since like 2010 and I just like retired in 2019 and then joined the broadcast team I just for had the Brazil. To throw out the meme. Nah, that's fine, that's fine. That's, <laughs> fine. that's, that's the most common back. thing that people do in Brazil. It they is, just play me every time. <laughs> I do want to bring you back to this matchup because uh, we might start off jokingly and it, you know, it, it is friendly between us, but you said it already. Next year looks completely different for the CB LOL and for the LCS because of the merger and that makes mm -hmm. everything. A, a bit more intense, yeah. I feel like, to catch. Yeah, and then, like, the spoiler for this game, it was, like, the most traditional organization in CBLO history, Pen Gaming against Team Liquid, which is the one of the most traditional ones. been there ones. since the start, yeah. Yeah, so, like, fighting in a bio tree, going, like, do-or-die matchup, that's going to be, like, insane. And I think Titan has the, has the experience to bring us the victory today. Yeah, I am more nervous as the day goes on, you know, especially yeah. you're talking yeah. about having upsets already. Plus, also, we came in with really high expectations of Team Liquid, and we've already seen some errors and some cracks really form in the games that they've played, you know, coming down to just mechanical errors coming from them. It is both, like, saving flashes, flashing late, and then in some team fights, the positioning just way too aggressive, especially some of the carries, like APA, of course, had some really big highlight ones. And so Team Liquid, it's it's this dichotomy of they still have made a lot of smart decisions as a team. So yeah. they still get themselves into these good spots and you still see, you know, gold leads and you still see them in games setting up for good possible objectives. But then when they go and do the fight, they mess up the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we bring the graph back maybe? I mean, it's it's fine. It, it, it goes in the middle and then it's bad. Yeah, because it's true. in those in these in these fights, as we see the graph again, it's their mid game being very strong, which makes everyone hopeful. But I will also say their early games aren't nearly as strong as they're used to. So after their powerful mid game, they're not with the gargantuan lead. They're in a slight advantage, and then I'd say like. Overall, the team is just trying to play too fast in the actual team fights. They're trying to make, like, APA specifically tried to make the big play in both of those games, failed in both of those games. And, like, and they, they just gotta calm down. The perspective that we have in Brazil is that APA goes to the impact silent so much, and yeah. if that not goes well for them, then just they just get lost. Somewhere. And it's gotta go well for them today. Here they come. are, Team Liquid, taking to the stage, trying to get that first victory, and Pain Gaming with all of Brazil behind them. And you gotta kind of, um, 
love the position that they're in, not the 0-2, but the fact that there are a lot of people that would like to see this upset happen. Right, Takashi? Right, I'm the one of those people, <laughs> for sure. Like, I, I, I believe in Tide, and I think he has an insane game against T1. Soloing Gomayushi in the laning phase in a 2v2. I hope that they did not like put Wiser in a bad spot for this next game, because Impact's gonna be the guy that I'm looking forward to have the potential to carry TL in this match. For sure, and I would say, like, from a mentality perspective, I'd love to be in Pain's game in shoes. Like, they're, when you're coming in as the underdog, yeah. that feels like they have a chance of winning, but if you lose, you're not just gonna get flamed all the way home. It's a different mindset to enter games into, and I think that is something that I feel like they're gonna be able to leverage. Yeah, and the mindset for Brazil, generally, like, the pressure is on the planes. I think then the Swiss stage, we didn't get that much pressure. Okay, the god of the draw is not Brazilian for sure, because we got G2, we got T1, and now TL. Yeah. But I think that the pressure is much more on Team Liquid side. It's a good point, actually. You got yeah. a very, very difficult draw. The same could go for Team Liquid as well. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much pressure because of the America's merger and because of already the trash talk, you want more ammunition for North versus yeah. South trash talk. Mm -hmm. And this is priming us <laughs> for an entire year so next begin year. begin then, begin. Yeah, Shoot just like Team Liquid lost to the Minions. I don't want to do it now. <laughs> TL lost hey, to Minions. Hey. We can do it, guys. <laughs> so I will say the things that are Yone's most banned. most important oh, things to me in Blue draft, side. aside from giving away Yone, the thing though, Shock Slows is actually a negative because um, mm -hmm. we're banning it on Blue side. Mm -hmm. And we were worried that APA, because he has not played a Yone game in his entire career, we were holding out hopes that they've been practicing it in secret and they would still be able to use it. But it is a very bad sign that we are banning it on blue side and we are not threatening that we will first pick it. I take yeah. my excitement back. Yeah, I'm already, I'm already a bit worried on that because the two most important things to me in draft for Team Liquid here are going to be APA's champion pool and getting Umpty on a tank. If we have Umpty on, you know, Sejuani Maokai, even Skarner, uh, as they actually ban out the Skarner themselves too. So <laughs> the Sejuani and Maokai, I'm really banking on those. And then APA, because of what we've seen with his positioning in team fights being a big risk, I really want him on something that has mobility. I don't want to mm. see the Syndra again multiple times. You know, he flashed forward or he even just walked forward into very vulnerable positions. So maybe Ari is something like that. Something exactly, okay. something like Ari, uh, something with any sort of mobility. Oh, okay, that's that's a good that's, band. That's a smart so band. yesterday I spoke with Buzio and he said that we should ban the Sejuani against the yep. TL. So I think that the bands that Ben just did is incredible. We should ban the Yone, but TL just helped us. They helped you out a lot. Is there anything we have to look forward to that uh, uh, something you really like to see on the like side of everyone was banning the Lucian and Jax. So TL first picking Jax, I think it's good for like. The, the TL draft in general. And about playing gaming, generally, like, we play two sources of engage. If Karaoke is playing more like a carry jungler, then Titan goes more for, like, Jim and Ash to help a set of things. But if Karaoke goes like Maokai, something like that, Titan can go Kai'Sa. And I think Titan is really good in Kai'Sa. We didn't see him before in this championship. Oh. And I think that he can mm. bring it today. It's a Nocturne. Yeah, could open up for Nocturne Oriana, but I think you want to see what Team Liquid has for AD Carry and Mage before you commit to that. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Maokai here out of Umpty. I, I, yeah, I, I kind of already like this Nocturne pick because if you're showing Jax, there's going to be some side lane play. And yeah. Nocturne is yeah. so good at shutting down side lanes. So regardless of the combo oh. that they put with it. Oof, uh, I wanted know. this guy for us. <laughs> 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 and I think like Tinkedo can bring Ari. I don't think he'll play Oriana that much. He doesn't like that much mages. Mm -hmm. I think more the Ari or something like Nico, something like that for him is better than Oriana. He doesn't excel at playing control mages that much. So here, either we get like a rel or something, you know, lock our support early, or we go for the APA champion. Um, and I kind of want them to get a good APA champion first. But we'll see. It would have, have to be blind, though, if they pick the APA champion here. So they're going to wait in 4 or 5 and have a few bands kick in. I, I'm totally fine having the rel for Core JJ. Oh. Having hard engages is, is strong. Okay, that's I don't love that a here. bit. Like, I like the comp, the Nocturne and Orion combo, but. Yeah. Kedo playing Orion is not like what he excels on. And I think Kuri is probably looking for an Alistar angle. He's has an insane Alistar and he can just like counter the Ralph on Car JJ. Well. Let's see. I think he's getting locked oh, in. Okay, okay. That surprised me a bit. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's see, let's see. All right, we definitely need the mobility for APA. Like, this is the thing I'm worried about most in the draft. Like, Nico. Nocturne and Oriana combos are going to threaten him now. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, Nico is a good champion for him. Even though everyone's going to mm -hmm. look at the, the Nico game. It's one of his best picks. He, he had big blunders. 
but most of clock. those blunders were were okay. around just it looked like just being so rushed in yeah, team fights and everything. Errors. And he could have made those errors on, on any other champ. So I still think it's a good ban. I think now we should be worried on like Ari and Vi combo for the TL. So I would ban Ari or Vi in here for pain. Oriana does beat Ari on the laning phase. So they can manage that, but I would take off the Vi if I was them. Are you happy or sad about the first three picks at this point? I'm actually really, um, I'm, I'm liking the first three like, picks from Team Liquid. I'm feeling pretty comfortable with these. I'm, I'm confident as well, but like I'm just a little bit with some fear about, about Zinkedo's landing phase on, 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 on Rihanna, and they are not like banning the Vi and Ari, so if Onti and Appa can do it, I'm worried for Zinkedo. I really like the bans from Pain here with Maokai and Nico because I was hoping to get Umpty on more of a tank champion. Now he would go more for the comp or what the standard would be, and I'm more expecting to see Vi, Ari, or Does something like that. Does he play Vi? He yeah. has played it. Okay. I wouldn't say he's played it super well. That's uh, nice to hear. He definitely had most of his <laughs> okay. success. Yeah, okay. He's mostly had a success on the champions that are currently banned. Okay, so now we're probably going for the sport here, right? Let's see. Yeah, they could just take Leona, Nautilus, Alistair, Alistar, whichever they want. I, I, I love Kuri Alistar. That can Is help a bit. Is there a power pick AD carry that hasn't been banned out yet that would just be clearly the best? I think just like Jim and Nash. Okay, he does love the Ezreal. And do you love it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, outside of playing <laughs> Ezreal, I, I do love it. Like, his win rate in Brazil is like 90% in like 40 games, something like that. That's like incredible win rate that he has in Brazil. But let's see, in this match, I think he has a hard game in here, like Jax, Rel, and Kaisa. Kaisa can dive Ezreal if they get through them, so that's going to be a complicated match. Yeah, I think later on into the game, uh, like, Jan has a very, very high chance of, uh, of being able to take over, but we'll see about the early stages, because it could be painful in lane phase. You're yeah, saving your, your last pick here for the support. So. There's the Vi that I told you to ban, thing oh. aiming Why? Probably Ari too. Yeah. yeah. It's just the combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, your nightmares I are coming true. I don't know true. why. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, we'll see the last pick. You do have to run right after it because yeah. I believe you're interviewing sure. a paid coach. But you can watch the last, the last pick and we then. We got a picture coming. Uh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Bart? This was awesome. And what do we get? Oh, that's a risky pick, but Kuri likes it as well in the Brazilian scene. But but, but, but but I would go the the, the Alistar in here. I think he is really really good on Bard, but his Alistar is something else, you know. So I would pick the Alistar here. Let's they see. Are, okay, 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 okay. Know your stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. guys, right. I'm going to the Brazilian broadcast. Okay. Yes. It was a pleasure. Bye bye. Thank you so <laughs> much, Abigail. Awesome. Um, yeah. What do we think? I think. By the book, Team Liquid's team comp is good, but I'm a little nervous about the execution barrier that they have with the Viari. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I came in really, really worried, but I actually really like the clear game plan. Mm. Okay, we got a clear game plan. We got a lot of hope. We got a lot of stress. It's the Battle of the Americas. Let's head over to our casters. Let's get ready to rumble. North America versus Brazil in an elimination best of three to determine who deserve to still keep playing here at Worlds 2024. Welcome back, everybody. If you're just now rejoining us, just now joining us off the bat, I'm Captain Flowers, joined by Azale and Dagda. Now, gentlemen, let's go ahead and set the stage here because I did ask our stats people to go ahead and uh, look into the history of this head-to-head. -head. Hello. Oh, we're going to remove Azale's curse today, too, by the way. Don't we're worry. Winning. There's we no are winning evil today. magic There's here. There's no curse. We're going to remove, it? Gonna remove it. There is no curse. We're going to remove all of that. <laughs> However, let's go ahead and look into the history of NA versus Brazil at Worlds. I had our stats people dive into it earlier today. The all-time record at Worlds for NA versus Brazil, including in play-ins, is 9-2 favoring North America. So 82% win rate for NA. The two losses are the BRTT versus Double Lift matchup back in 2015 and Jat's Team Liquid losing oh. to IMTZ <laughs> in 2020. Yep, and Jat even told me that required him to run it down exceptionally hard in draft. <laughs> yeah. He said that they drafted 
the best Merc Treads team uh, ever. Renekton, Lilia, TF, Ash, Thresh. Yeah. And, and then they he said they bought Merc Treads and they lost. <laughs> yeah. So he said just as long as Team Liquid doesn't do that today, he thinks they've got a good shot. And I don't see I don't any see of a those five champions team, so we're on good. Team Liquid's side. By the way, keep your eyes on the prize here in the bottom lane. The featured matchup presented by Mercedes Benz, Yawn versus Chitan. This is two dudes who both have the opportunity mm -hmm. to step up and really make an impact here in game one. And one thing I will say is I am a little bit nervous about the Impact Jax. Not because I don't think he can play the champion. Yes, he can play the champion. You know, yes, he can perform well on it. But he is just so exceptional on these enablers, on these kind of tanks and more supportive style champions that I never really like when I see him on the carry. Um, and I do think that he does have some really bad tendencies when he is playing carries because he is so selfless. And when you are playing champions like Jax, you need to be greedy. You need to play for your waves, play for your farm, play yeah. for your levels. And at times, he'll put himself in these spots where he's just sacrificing for the team, he's over grouping, and then you're gonna end up being really, really useless on these types of champs. So we'll see how they can do, but TL are gonna initiate lane swap. They were spotted though. This is a great oh. ward just he as they so can see. He's not oh, behind he them. It. He's just gonna stand here. Chitan just checked the forward brushes, so he can just soak all of this experience. He's it's just going to stand huge. here. He's not going to do anything. Because I was about to say, Karaoke got in and he stole away Raptor Camp on the strong side. Actually may even steal away the rip buff as well. So Karaoke is getting a good amount here for himself. It is answered by Umti on the bottom exactly, side though. Yeah. So they're in a similar position, but this is huge for Impact. Impact is loving this, man. Yeah. Look at Nar on the other side. Wiser has to go mid and share XP with Jinkato. So they actually have solo XP being grabbed by APA. Jinkato and Wiser are sharing experience and Impact is going to be getting, you know, all all the experience from that first wave. And now with this crashing, he knows that Curry's probably not here. He's gonna yeah. walk back. He's gonna actually be able to farm the wave or at the very least soak experience here. This is incredible as far as a start here for Impact. Yeah, Counter-Strike immediately, forcing the Arcane Shift out of Chitan, sidesteps the Mystic Shot, not farming the wave, but over the wall comes Umpty. Nice early flash from Chitan, makes sure that he avoids the Flash Vault Breaker from Umpty, gets himself back, but still, the state of the experience in bottom lane that you're talking about, Azeo, that's the big story here for Impact. Yeah, especially because Visor has already had to burn that so, uh, TP to get up to that lane to try and match. Core JJ has moved down to this bottom side, though, so I'm curious if they're trying to set up another play on towards Cheetan, but he still has that arcane shift. Looks like they're just worried about if there was going to be some sort of double up with Curry as he starts to move down to this bottom side. Exactly. They also don't know where Karaoke is, right? So, you know, if Impact is pushing this out, he could get wrapped around on. So I think it is just to give that safety for the crash here. APA taking the bat and some trades here in mid lane from Jinkato. Obviously, he was in that 1v2, so you can expect him to be getting pushed in. Yeah. Uh, as he did lose some health you know, early on from that NAR. Uh, but APA is going to have to go back to base and TP. Yep, Umpty just hanging around, making a quick pass through here as Scuttle Crabs are about to spawn on both sides of the river. Let's see. Pain Gaming does have their jungler down here in this bottom side, Impact and Core JJ both level three. However, a 2v3 is not going to feel too great for him. Now with Karaoke at level four, Curry doing a nice job flashing in for the Pulverize Headbutt. Impact has to try to escape on this one. Counter-Strike flashback over the wall, 150 HP left. Team Liquid's top laner gets away. Really good though, at the end of the day, that's three summoners there from Pain. Flash off Curry as well as the Ignite and the flash on Karaoke just for the one flash there from Impact. So Impact is going to be happy to survive, to get out, and the wave is pushing towards him. So he just TPs right back to the bottom. Core JJ will be here. There will be no threat with no summons on the Alistar and Impact's going to be able to collect all of this farm. And that's what I was going to say is huge for him because Wiser's just reset, but he's got to walk his little legs up there. Whereas for TL, they just get to collect this entire wave. Core is keeping him in check and maybe even engage here. Yep. Just jumping in on Chitan, knowing that he has no flash. He's low on mana. It's not very easy for him to avoid that damage. And the other thing that's kind of a, a bit of an untold story so far is the fact that because Impact hid here, got all that XP and defended the tower, not one plate taken by Pain in a lane swap. So it's not only the experience, it's the expectation that you'd be getting all of this uh, all this gold on that bot side here. Uh, you know, because Pain normally, you know, when you have that lane swap, you get that 2v1, 3v1, sometimes 4v1 scenario where you get two to three plates on bot lane tower. Yeah, with Core JJ going down towards the bottom side though, TL haven't got a plate either, so it's a bit even Stevens in that regard, but you're still opening up a nice CS lead for Jan, and as you say, the experience and all that extra CS, well, still kind of working out for Wiser in this one. Jinkato now under pressure. 
Ball breaker charged up, doesn't even have to fully commit it. They forced the flash out. Jinkato knew he had to use that summoner spell, otherwise it would have been a real nasty situation. So getting rid of the summoner there from the mid laner. We'll see if Team Liquid can make good on it before the cooldown comes back. Nicely done by TL though, going in, putting a little pressure on, not committing any summoners themselves, just the threat of that engage. Forced out that early flash here from Jinkato, and now that means you're Orianna against Vi Ari with no flash. So when they hit six, there is a bullseye on his back. Pain is going to have to play around him, going to have to really protect him. And we'll see if TL can actually execute on that because that is the bread and butter of these comps. Yep. Low mobility mage here, you got to punish. And that's why Karaoke and Curry are starting to move up so quickly to this top side because not only is it just the level six, it's Core JJ now opening up on the map. He can be such a threat here. And now as APA ticks over to level six, I think that's exactly what they want to do. Core JJ stepping a little bit fur forward. Umpty wants to join him here with a ball breaker, trying to back up his support. Shock wave comes in, but APA wraps around from the side. It'll be first blood over to Pain Gaming, and Karaoka's getting paid. Curry wants to get away, but he's running back into the Team Liquid jungle. A little bit more damage will take him down, and APA's on the board. Yawn needs to keep on running. It's an even trade, but just barely Yawn popping the barrier at the very end, afraid of that last little bit of damage from the Command Dissonance. He escapes. Even game. Yeah, dead even game right now, but it's first blood going over to Pain, and they have the winning HP, so they're gonna be able to take the grubs off of this back as well. Pain gonna be feeling really happy about how those skirmishes went. Still, TL overall, obviously when you initiate this lane swap, you're expecting to be down in gold. They are not, so not too bad at the end of the day. The Hex Flash though here, getting interrupted just barely by Core JJ, getting that Shattering Strike into the Crash Town, but still the, kind of the knock away, right, is that uh, ultimate from the Orianna came through, did only catch on to Umpty, and then TL at least are able to come in and pick off the low health bar on Curry as Core JJ mounts up to walk away, but that was very close to being a little bit more of a disaster if that knockback onto Core JJ hadn't come through. Yeah, and that barrier from Yon late there actually on the, the distance. The damage had already come through, so uh, definitely not perfectly timed. All right, wave crashing into mid lane tier one turret. Jinkato just going to keep farming that one up. The first blood did go over to the Nocturne. Karaoke having the paranoia ready to go now. This is always one of the biggest points of the game for Nocturne, that first ulti and how much value you get out of it. Absolutely, but Umpty is now six as well. APA is six, of course. They have those ultimates you know, pretty much ready to go here, and there's no flash on Jinkato still. So uh, we'll see if they can actually find that kill in mid lane. That's where they're going to be looking. We'll see if Umpty can find a play. Looks like APA still has a little bit of time left on the cooldown for his. So they will have to wait a little bit longer to try and set that up. Umpty back down around the bottom lane now. Core JJ only level four, but Yon is level six for the Killer Instinct. Chitan still only level five on the Ezreal, of course. True Shot Barrage, not as impactful as an ulti in these melees and these big scraps as the Killer Instinct would be, but a very powerful tool for wave control and team fight damage if they get into a bigger fight. Umpty's gonna start up the Drake now, though, for TL. Yeah, and I like this for TL. He got pushed in mid, you shadow bot side with Umpty to make sure they can get the shove, and it's very difficult for Karaoke to actually try and contest this. He was shifting down towards his bottom side, so he needs to get his camps to ensure TL don't get both Dragon and this bottom side jungle, but it means he's also not in a position to try and counteract or counter punch on the top side. So overall, just good map movement from TL and good understanding where Karaoke was going to be in the map. Okay, and as we often see, neutral objectives early on traded between the two teams. First three Grubs went to Pain. First Drake went over to Team Liquid. The timers are not synced up at all, though. About three minutes separating them. So I'm curious if we're going to see much of a fight here for the second set of Grubs. I think we will, because TL is actually already swapping their bot lane to head up towards top. Impact just gave up that big wave that was pushing towards him. And he's going to allow Yawn to collect that while he heads out down towards bot to collect the wave that will eventually bounce off of Cheetan's tower. As APA does spot Curry there. Okay, grabs a little bit of damage onto him. Honestly, not a whole lot to write home about. Does have the Spirit Rush ready to go again. Does have Flash. Umpty also with a Flash and ulti of his own. Everything pretty much up on both sides. Impact down here in bottom lane. Has his teleport ready to join if a fight breaks out up in top side. But remember, the teleports are still not yet unleashed. Should be ready to go by the time the Grubs are also spawning. As you can see, Yawn still just farming up there in the top lane. 60 stacks left on the cult. Yeah, and I think Curry has done a really good job playing around Jinkato here. You know, he is the most vulnerable member to this R-Vi combo, and 
They have not been able to find any sort of a go with it so far on the TL side, but you can see Cheetan has moved up. They clearly want to contest Grubs. Okay. And it's going to be about this play, though, because Impact has the TP advantage on bot side. Why is there TP down towards bot? So I feel like Pain have kind of botched the setup here a little bit, because as long as he can't get interrupted by the Meganar, he can always TP to join. So if Pain overcommit towards the Grubs, it's going to go really bad for them. And that's what I was going to point out. It felt like, you know, Cheetan was still down in that bottom side as Wiser TP'd in. So you had a wave where you could have waited for some sort of like walk down, but instead ends up going for it. And now your grubs aren't even up for another 20 seconds. So Impact should be able to clear this wave and then still be in a position to follow up. The only reason behind I could see it is that they're basically just trying to force feed Jin Kiedo right now. He got the wave in mid, then transported himself up to that top side. So then he could get another big wave that was crashing there. So it definitely feels like Pain Gaming are trying to get a lot of resources into this Oriana right now. Karaoke stepping up here a little bit. Pain does not want to allow these grubs to go away for free, but Team Liquid is trying to keep forcing this vision line further and further ahead. You can see they've got a ward in the chicken brush already. They haven't spotted Umpty though. Impact could be in trouble. Yeah, Wiser with a nice slam back into the wall. Wants to throw the boulder. Impact with a flash away. Nearly solo killed down there in the 1v1 bottom lane, but a nice engaged ball breaker flash coming out from Umpty. Kuri tries to get away, but APA's got the damage. Team Liquid with a one for nothing so far. And a nice charm onto Karaoka is going to put him in a little bit of a compromised spot here too. Fight fades as PNG walk away one man fewer. Beautiful Q flash there from Umpty, though. Actually connects on two members, knocking them up, getting that damage. Just should be able to get them the grubs here. But it's also a big win for Wiser on the bot side. He's opened up a 700 gold lead now against Impact, who first picked this Jax, almost got solo killed there, had the flash away to safety, is now down 20 CS and 600 gold. And I feel like if you've been watching the LCS this year, if you've been tuning in to Team Liquid and how they've been playing, Impact had a monster performance. He won MVP in summer. He was constantly making every other top laner in the league look silly. And now to be made look to be made to look the same amount of silliness by his opponent in Wiser, Pain Gaming stepping up. But it's your most improved player that I want to praise here, because that was a great shift from him. And it feels like whenever TL come off to these early advantages, it's off the back of APA in these roams. Like pushing in the side lane, starting to move towards mid. He's looked great on picks like the Talia in the LCS, and now on the Ari as well. He got that first move. He was the one that helped to set up while Jin Kieda was still trying to chase the fight. And if TL can continue to play around APA like they normally do, I think you're in a good spot to continue burning, well, punishing the fact now that you burned Cheetan's flash and also Curry's as well. I do agree, but honestly, it is concerning if you start losing that side lane 1v1. The game gets so oh, yeah. much harder if you're yeah. falling behind in that 1v1, you're getting pressure. There's always the threat of the Nocturne coming in and, and looking to set up that dive. Plus, we have the nocturne Oriana combo, which has been showcased a number of times at Worlds, is incredibly strong, very difficult to avoid, to deal with. You know, TL, they are playing a pretty heavily execution-based comp here, and that is where they have failed at Worlds. You know, this team has put themselves in good spots to win against some of the best LPL teams out there. You know, LNG, they were in a good spot to win. That's the team that went 3-0 first, but at the end of the day, they have failed on their execution. That's what they really need to clean up. First items coming online in a few different spots. Mid laners have both of theirs. Archangels finish for Jinkato. Malignance first for APA for the extra ultimate cooldown. Sundered Sky for the buy. Over on the other side, Experimental Hexplate for the Nocturne. We usually see this or the Stridebreaker first. Experimental Hexplate just going to give you the greater amount of stats compared to the active of the Stridebreaker. Up there in the top side, still impact, working on that call, trying to regain a little bit of the money that he's fallen behind compared to Wiser using that one. But the static shift for Yon. Also, a pretty big first purchase here for the Kai'Sa with 15 seconds left before the turret plates fall, before the Rift Herald spawns. Mountain Drake still live on the map, and right now it looks like it's Pain Gaming wanting to start it off. Why is there having popped Meganar though? Could be the opportunity that TL need. You can even see the Rome coming down from APA again, just slightly ahead of his opposition, but. Everyone on Pain Gaming backed away. I don't think they can, yeah, you can see they can't contest the Dragon. Wiser having popped that Meganar just makes him so much less of a threat in this fight. Mm -hmm. Looks like Pain's still hanging around the area. Karaoke securing that blue buff for himself. Level nine on the Nocturne, same as Umpty's Vi. Yawn gonna come over, help Umpty finish this one off. Oh, oh my no. god, he stole it! An early smite from Umpty, and it's gonna be stolen away by Chitan. But instead, Team Liquid turned into fight. Now they've got the first kill for themselves, but immediately one comes back as Umpty falls. Now APA is stuck behind enemy lines, going in for Karaoka. Yawn flies in with a killer instinct, and Team Liquid is up two for one so far in the fight. Impact wants to go in for the counter strike, but it doesn't have the stun here just yet. One last Void Seeker, kaboom for Yawn! It started off as Harp 
break, but that rebound's looking real good for TL. The steal on the dragon just clips smite. the edge. He literally didn't that use mine. But this engage from Core JJ was brilliant. The charm follow up. Then look at the uh, opportunities to get on towards the back line. I got a little nervous when I saw APA dashing towards Pain Gaming, but Jan supporting his mid laner, going directly in onto Karaoke. And it was that one-two punch that really sealed the deal for TL. Exactly, and I think that's why he's diving forward, knowing that the Killer Instinct yeah. is ready, knowing that he's going to have that assistance in the back line, and the major cooldowns are already gone from Pain. Nice play, though, from Titan, and definitely a failed execution there from MT. He did not combo his smite. He didn't even press smite. You know, if he just e-smites there, he did it when it was a bit above 900 health, but if you just press e-smite, auto-smite, anything, that's a guaranteed kill, and we'll see if this comes back to bite them later, because now you're set back on that road towards Soul. You gotta smite the damn Drake. I know that sometimes you might be thinking about min maxes, save it for later, whatever. But in moments like that, you don't want to be giving away the objectives. Nicely Jinkato. done from Chitan, but now it's Jinkato in trouble. They wombo combo a little bit of crash down with Charm, but it's going to be outplayed by Pain Gaming. Looking good up here in the top lane, Jinkato just making Core and APA look foolish. This Ari just doesn't have enough damage in the tank. We saw it yesterday from all of our Aries. We're seeing it now for APA. When you want to go for these terror dives, there's just not enough to burst down a member. Okay, now we got a TP coming in for pain. They want to force the tier two down here in the bottom lane. A little bit of extra burn from the three grubs. Pain Gaming, they might be down in kills, but they're up in gold. They're out playing Team Liquid around the map. And Impact is going to be completely useless. You know, he is completely out of the game. He is, you know, first pick this on blue side. That is where you're putting the prio, and he has just not played it well enough. You know, had a really clever level one, got the experience, but Wiser has been heavily outplaying him in those side lanes in the 1v1, almost solo killed him, has now taken multiple towers there with the assistance of the team. Umpty having to flash away there from Curry as he jumps in for the headbutt pull combo. APA finally going to claim this turret up here in the top lane, but it's still only one to two in that count as well. But it's Pain Gaming showing that they're not out of it just yet. This is a team that many were like, oh, well, they made it to the main event, but Pain Gaming want to show so much more of what they can achieve here. This is the first time we've ever seen a CB Law representative make it to the main event. They played against our idols in T1 as well, but now they want to try and see if they can go toe to toe with TL to boot. It has been a long time, but they have made it before. They made it, you know, eight years since the CB Law made it, nine years since Pain made it, so they have made it to that main stage a couple times, but definitely been a long while. And representing their region well here, trying to show yeah. that they can take down one of the big dogs here. And uh, gonna look for Jin Kato once again. This time, he does have the Archangel Shield still ready. He goes over the wall, but the Vault Breaker does not find the target. He uses a very early ulti on the Orianna. Jinkato's still alive for now, but Yon goes on a killing spree. The Team Liquid 80 carry 3-0 and 2. Five out of six kill participation. Really trying to make this one happen as APA goes over the wall, finds Chitan. Gets him down to 150, but can't commit anymore. The Paranoia protecting the Ezreal from what would have been death. Pretty surprised that Chitan didn't actually like, use cleanse. Like, he just kind of sat through that. Uh, very close to going down. Calculated. Ended up working out for him. I mean, you just kind of trade the ultis at the end of the day. Nocturne also very long cooldown here at rank one. You know, not level 11 just yet for Karaoke. So uh, APA is still going to be pretty happy about that. Especially with a minute until the next dragon. Not having that tool available is going to hurt. And when you want to try and set up for this combo between the jungle and mid on Pain Gaming, so nice pick, a nice use of that ultimate from APA in turn. And with everyone now resetting, you're getting control over mid. You're starting to set up on this bottom side. You should be able to shift this weight with APA from mid to that bottom side and guarantee yourselves a turret take. And while Impact is very behind, Yawn and APA both in great positions. Yawn, in fact, has been massive in this game thus far. I think he's played really well at Worlds overall and is now nearly 2,000 gold ahead of Chitan on this Kai'Sa is set up for success. Okay, 20 seconds until the Drake spawns. Now, there's not nearly as much pressure on Pain to fight for this as there might have been otherwise. APA immediately getting comboed by Curry. The Alistar threatening so much follow-up from the rest of Pain. APA forced to use the Spirit Rush. This could put TL in a really bad spot for this upcoming Drake fight. They might just need to gone. surrender it. Yeah, they have to give it up. You know, APA just playing with fire there. Now going to get his recall stopped. Not really at risk of going down to that. Um, Impact is going to push out topside, but now you've got one dragon stolen. The next dragon is actually botched here by a little bit of, of overconfidence there from APA. Moves too far forward, has to drop the Spirit Wash. And you're not really going to be able to trade much of anything for it. I think Wiser is going to get up there before there's really much threat on the tower. So Impact will get a little bit of chip damage, pull the gold a little bit closer, but 
They all oh. left him to try to solo it. Team Liquid does not want to allow Pain Gaming to get this for free. Karaoke's going to claim the Drake. He flashes away. He stays alive with about 200 HP. Pain retreating back to the mid lane, but at the same time, Impact is left free farming up at the top side, well, beating on the tier two. This is actually such a misplay from Pain because they had, had guaranteed themselves the dragon, and everyone's like, okay, Karaoke's got it. No problem. No one helps him out. That means not only does Cork get in there and force them to actually contest, he has to use his flash, he has to use his ult, and Wiser had to leave top lane to walk back towards the fight because he was thinking there was a 5v5 going to break out. So instead of Impact getting nothing, them getting the Dragon, they end up getting a Tier 2 Tower Top, they end up forcing a Flash. Yes, Pain still get the Dragon, but jeez, that was really kind of watched there. And look at the gold difference now between Impact and Wiser. That was sitting above a thousand gold. Now it's only a kill in the difference, and that can definitely change the, such a big factor in this game for Wiser not having as much control on a sideline as they start to scale towards these, you know, level 14, 15, 16. I mean, the tier two towers are just worth so much gold, right? So, you know, that really did hurt that 1v1. You know, you could say Wiser maybe should have just gone up to, to defend the tier two anyway, but it is always tough when they, you think, hey, maybe a fight's going to break out. Maybe yep. I need to be there. Um, but either way, you know, TLC, the opportunity as everyone from Pain just walked out and left Karaoke to do it. They go in, they put that pressure on, and now Impact in a much better spot as a result. Yawn's on two fully completed items, um, but Pain fighting well and are you know winning out in that Dragon game. And for Pain, you can kind of see they're a bit unsure of themselves as to how they want to try and approach the map. They're trying to cover wise around that top side, but it's leaving space for APA in the bottom end. There's also multiple members that aren't really holding on to this mid wave as well. So TL now starting to put a little bit of threat on towards there. So I think Pain just struggling on the map side. This was something that was kind of touted for them coming off of their domestic play was they were get off to these great leads. They had a strong early game, but unsure about themselves when it got to that mid game scenario. And now against TL, it's coming back to hurt them a little. All right, 21 minutes into the game. So Baron is live. Pain Gaming trying to make sure they've got control of their own red side jungle, but the bottom lane's in some trouble. Umpty and APA, that's the wombo combo you draft these two champions for. Vi and Ari wiping the Orianna off the map, applying more pressure to the bottom lane tier two, while Core JJ and Yon keep the wave shoved up into the tier one in mid lane. Karaoka hovering between the two, but there's nothing to even do about this bottom lane. The tier two is deleted, and Team Liquid is 4,000 gold ahead. Yeah, that's a great play there from TL and on top, no flashes cost. And on the other side, Jinkato lost his flash and died. So now it's so hard to play side lane at all on the Orianna here, knowing that Bai is waiting, knowing that Ari is waiting. Second item gets completed, and it's the book. APA's feeling confident here. The book of Yap. Yep. This is <laughs> this is the kind of thing that you're ready. You wrote of the death I note. Did. This is the Yap note. He I did, did love the idea of him scrolling through to find out what he's going to say in yeah. all chats. <laughs> he's been quiet so far this tournament because uh, they have been getting the better of him. So not a lot of yapping has uh, come out so far Maybe from that's why. America. Maybe that's why. Mm, that's true. Yeah. Maybe the yapping is his power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he must embrace the Yap. Yeah. Become one with this. Exactly. <laughs> he did pretty well in the LCS, but. Uh, Jan working towards that third item. He has been very accelerated. He's going towards that AP variant. Uh, I prefer it so heavily over just like full on AD. Mm. Another tower falls here. That's five taken off the map by TL as they're going to try to move to pressure this bot side once again. You can see Impact pushing up there. And MT was trailing him. But TL happy to just play through these side lanes and keep looking for picks with the Vi. All right, gentlemen, we are sub 90 seconds away from our next Drake this game. I'm expecting to get another fight for it. Curry and Karaoka trying to maintain the vision in their own red side jungle, as we are also at the point of the game where these buffs become team wide. So grabbing the red is going to feel pretty good for everybody. Team Liquid taking the chance to secure the Scuttle Crab here in the top side river and all the extra vision that that also provides. Umpty picking up the red for Team Liquid at the same time as these timers are pretty well synced up. Core JJ and APA staying pretty close together as the Scryer Trinket is used by Pain just to make sure Team Liquid's not trying to sneak an early Baron. Exactly. I mean, when you see a Kai'Sa this fed with the Rage Blade, the Baron does die incredibly fast. Of course, they don't know where the Vi is, so they don't realize that Umpty's not on the side of the map and Teal wouldn't be doing it. Impact, maybe gonna find an angle here. We'll see if he gets spotted out. Curry could be in trouble. Yeah, Curry finds Yawn, headbutts him back. Loses the Aftershock there now. Immediately, they jump on the Alistar. Unbreakable Will does not live up to the name. Yawn goes on a rampage. Team Liquid with a free pick. 
They were trying to set up for the dragon that's about to spawn, hoping that maybe they could threaten TL into some of these positions. They get a ward down, but it ends up causing Curry's life because he can't get the reset. And now it's a Baron instead of a dragon. Team Liquid know they have the man advantage for the next 10 seconds. It's a support that's dead, so it's not like he can TP in either. At the very least, they're going to force Pain to step up and make them stop. Team Liquid, though, already have the Baron down to 3k. Karaoke trying to use the Nocturne ulti to go into the pit. Impact's already going to be killed off as APA tries to get away. Karaoke's still down to the pit. Yon needs to grab the damage. The Baron is going to go over to Team Liquid. Wiser still trying to fight, but Yon's going to outplay him and slay him. He has to try to retreat now. Core JJ going to cover that exit. There's only two men left alive on Team Liquid, and one of them has to die. It's Baron for TL, but at the cost of four dead bodies. And Pain are going to get sole point here as well. Pain are really starting to pull back in this game. TL decided to just go for the flip here. Basically, AP is trying to zone, but look at this combo. Into the back line, Karaoke gets in there with Chiton's ultimate coming over the top. They burst out multiple members, and it's only thanks to the heroics of Yawn here, dodging out with the ult, with the barrier, kills off Nocturne before he can smite the Baron and kills the Baron himself, or this would have been an unmitigated disaster for TL. The fact that you get that damage on a Karaoke, like, he got this might, but it was, like, basically panicked to be, like, I'm about to die, about to die. give me something. Yep. But that turnaround for Pain Gaming, that's so much gold. And as you say, Dragon now too, and the opportunity to get back out onto they the map. They didn't do the Dragon, I think but, that's a mistake. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, Dragon's alive. Because I was about to say, when you look at the items for this Oriana now, she's got the Storm Surge, she's going to be working up towards a potential Rabadons or the Shadow Flame next. She's now been accelerated thanks to that gold. And now you're in a position where Pain Gaming are able to potentially fight back with some good combos. And I want to rewind the tape a little bit, Azale. Yep. You said, back with that Drake. We'll see if they end up regretting this later. If that smite, or lack thereof, comes back to bite them. And yes, sir, it has. Soul Point now demands Team Liquid's attention in the Drake pit every five minutes for the rest of the game. Exactly. Little things in League of Legends can build up to become incredibly big problems here. And that stolen dragon, that miss might by Umpty, means now you are one mistake away from giving over Ocean Soul, and that's a permanent buff here. You know, TL still in the driver's seat, still heavily ahead in gold, but taking, you know, plays that I think, it feels like they're behind, you know what I mean? Like the plays that they're kind of taking at times, like going for that Baron on a flip, we're up 6K, you could just play for the turn. Yeah, I think seeing that Curry was down there, like, oh, well, that's kind of their quote-unquote engage tool, but kind of forgetting about the mid-jungle combo and learning to regret it, but still, at least getting some use out of this Baron buff, because you can still see for the Red Bull Baron power play, up about 1,200 gold, which when you lost that many members, definitely helps out that it's managed to recover just a slight bit. But still, the base will not be cracked, and I think that's kind of the saving grace for Pain Gaming, where they do get time to continue to scale. And you could see, though, when the vision was toggled, Pain Gaming does not have a whole lot of lights on across Summoner's Rift right now. So they got to be careful as they slowly creep forward, take back control over their own side of the map. This Baron is going to dissipate here in about 15 seconds. APA still farming up in the top side. The problem is with that Baron fight, too, that book has no pages. It's a cover and a cover. The thing is it's empty. Book. Not exactly what you want to be working with here on this RA Team Liquid. Still about a 5,000 gold lead but if pain gaming gets this soul here in three and a half minutes that pretty much erases all of that value yeah basically entirely and you know a lot of what yon's build is is about poke right and ocean soul says well i don't care about that so uh, that becomes definitely very problematic of course you can still win with soul and there's no guarantee that they'll give it up but jail gonna have to play really heavily towards it and off that string of plays wiser again created a pretty big advantage for himself he's now up over 1000 gold over impact again it's really all up to yon and apa these young na carries here you're on TL that they put so much faith into that have improved tremendously over this last year. They have got to show up and carry this game. And that's why I think Giannis be so careful when he's trying to get control of this mid wave because if you end up with a Nocturne coming over the wall, the Oriana ults, you're suddenly finished. And a lot of this is TL trying to play this 1-3-1, one, one, but it does leave them vulnerable if they don't get the waves in the right order. At the moment, they are doing a good job. You can see nobody kind of pressing too far forward. And there's always that core of the AD carry jungle and support working together. But one misstep and pain gaming can pounce.
three big purchases right now, though. Seeker's Arm Guard on both the Jax and the Kai'Sa. Huge for avoiding that combo, that assassination mm -hmm. torpedo that you're talking about. But also, Rabadon's Death Cap done for the Ari in mid lane. APA does a significant amount of damage with this in Shadow Flame after that Malignance for the original ulti cooldown. And Wiser just picked up his Wits End and a Giant's Belt on top. So he is getting very tanky now at this point. That's Merc Shreds, that's, you know, Sterix. You really are going to struggle to deal with this guy. And there's actually quite a bit of magic damage over on the TL side. Obviously, Jax is mixed. Ari is pure magic. Kai's is pretty mixed as well here. So not going to be easy to deal with this Gnar. Uh, has created a pretty big problem for himself. And yet, you do have that Seekers on Jax. That is great for that potential 5v5. But Zonis is not a strong 1v1 item, and Wiser's no. just going to take even more prominence in that side lane. Yeah, I got to praise Wiser for just how much better he's played this first game than Impact. 0-1 and 2 for the Jax, 2-1 and 2 for the Gnar. Wiser is up over 60 CS compared to Impact, but now Karaoke could be in a little bit of danger. There's not enough firepower from Team Liquid nearby to finish off this kill. But APA, that's what I'm talking about. That's the amount of AP that he's managed to build up on this Ari can pose a serious threat to so many targets on pain gaming you can see this tier 2 turret nearly dead the burn from the void mites nearly taking it out but not quite there it is 60 seconds until the soul for pain gaming spawns team liquid must be ready to answer this because pain would love to pick up this buff but that's why we're not seeing tl overextend for this turret or try and use any of these big spells right as that objective is about to spawn they just want to try and keep pain gaming in the dark and in their own base and they've been doing a decent job just far so for but APA just need to be a little bit careful as Pain now should be looking for their own resets to try and finish off some of the riders. Cheetah just got his third. You're still looking at a, nearly that Sonya is complete for Chinguero. And I'm kind of waiting for Impact to reset. He's been on the map for a long time here, you know, with way less items. It's three and a half over on Wiser's side. He only has a 1.5k deficit, so like he should have enough to complete an item. We'll see if he can actually get back in base in time to be able to do that as TL again clearing out some vision over on this Baron side of the map, but. Wouldn't want to see them play for Baron and trade for Sol. I just don't think it's worth it whatsoever giving over that permanent buff. But they are going to be starting it up here. We'll see if they can do this one a little bit more cleanly than the last time as Pain are just moving down towards Sol. And I think it is going to be that trade I was talking about. Yeah. I mean, you have to get so much done with this for it to be worthwhile because the Ocean Soul is forever. They're going to try to get here and contest, but I think it's too late. APA is teleporting Gun. down. Team Liquid, they aren't going to be able to challenge for the Drake, but they do want to try to kill Pain afterwards, see if they can manage to get some sort of a punish here, but they're not there in time. Curry, the only man lagging a little bit behind. Void Seeker shot off. Not going to find any contact with that one. Umpty coming around for the Pinsir Assault. Yawn and Impact still chasing. Umpty over the wall, channeling the Vault Breaker. Jumps in, but he won't find nothing. Immediately counterattack coming out from Pain Gaming. Umpty loses his Sterics, loses his Flash. Team Liquid loses their chance, and Pain Gaming get the soul and get everybody out. I mean, it's just a horrible call from Team Liquid. It's, it's not anywhere close to a game-ending Baron here. I don't understand why they feel from an advantage. They're up 7,000 gold. Yeah. Why do you feel you can't actually just fight for the Dragon there? It really makes no sense whatsoever. And it's a frustrating play to watch here from a team that is normally so good on the map. That's how they were getting advantage against these LPL teams. But it's also they just burned both their teleports. They're now trying to spread out on the map and get full value out of this barn. But it's going to be really difficult and pain kind of realizing that they're happy to contest TL as they move in towards this jungle. But I think as TL, you kind of have to group. I mean, the gold lead is irrelevant now, right? So yeah. now you've, you've thrown away your entire advantage that you built throughout this game through a miss smite and a bad call on a trade of Baron for that. So we'll see if TL can get a lot from this Baron because they absolutely have to, or their advantage is gone. If I'm Pain, I'm just waiting it out. Just sit back in the base, a minute 30. Great, you can take some jungle camps. I don't care. I just got 4,000 gold worth of stats from the, from the Dragon Soul. And I like the fact that you brought up earlier, Isaac, it nullifies a big advantage of the Kai'Sa, specifically the style of build that goes heavily into Full the AP. AP. Those Void Seekers are normally obnoxious. They can force you out of situations that you could otherwise contest, but Ocean is so good at just completely getting rid of that X Factor. Impact is trying to split push up here in the top lane, but again, he's just so far behind. He has struggled so much to find any relevance in this game, and Team Liquid just seems completely out of sorts.
It's there we go. The engage paranoia down to the bottom lane. APA is going to get caught. He's already fleeing, and Karaoke and Jinkato pick him off. And that's exactly what I was talking about. The one three one is so difficult thanks to this nocturne, but they turn on top. They want to go after Wiser. He just turned back into Mini Nar, but the Sterix is enough to keep him alive. Team Liquid is going to hard force down the tier three turret in the top lane, but they won't get anything else. Shattering Strike on Curry to stop the Alistar from moving any further forward. Karaoke is coming up around the side, but without Paranoia, he can't find any way to jump on Team Liquid here. So it'll be a trade, APA for a Tier 3 turret. And at the end of the day, it's not too bad for Pain whatsoever. Impact, though, overstays. This could be really good for Pain. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Impact, <laughs> Impact jumps out. I'm, the way that, I'm just going to be blunt here. The way that Impact has been playing so far this game, every time he gets caught, I'm thinking he's dead. This feels like a totally yeah. different impact from what we saw domestically. I mean, just look at the farm difference in top lane, right? You know, you're playing the Jax again. This is kind of a problem where you're playing the Jax to be able to have side lane prio. You know, he's spending so much time moving towards the theme, trying to threaten flanks, trying to do these things. Guess what? You're falling more and more and more behind in farm. Even if you find that flank, at a certain point, it doesn't matter because you're useless. And the fact that now Baron has just faded off them and you haven't even cracked an inhibitor gives a ton of opportunities for Pain Gaming to continue to play out the map state. And as long as it's Wiser who's protecting that top lane, he's always going to be in a position where he should be finding the 1v1 yeah. and able to teleport in. Absolutely. And I think the game now ha has gotten to a state where it's basically just going to be a, a flip for Elder, right? Yeah. TL basically need the Elder to actually win the game. So now you're taking a fight at Dragon you know, at a point where it's basically equal instead of taking the one you could have taken five minutes ago when you were up 7k. Well, we've also got that ever so nerve-wracking state of League of Legends where both super buffs will be spawning almost at the exact same time. It creates this really tense macro state where teams have to try to juke one another, try to lead the guy down the wrong path and see if you can manage to sneak one of these away. Sometimes it ends up getting traded, sometimes not. Karaoke getting away here with a blast cone, umpty. Thinking about chasing him, but there's just no point in trying to press R on the guy when he still has spell shield. Curry gonna walk up, face check here, finds APA, Corin Umpty. Curry jumps in, true shot barrage over the top of three. Pain Gaming are going in, and Team Liquid's gotta be careful about it. They try to jump back away. APA's nearly killed already, and Pain Gaming are looking good. Impact has to try to retreat. APA's still almost dead, but Yawn is dominating, and the Alistar is out of the picture. It's plus one for Team Liquid, and they're still thinking about some more. APA's about to die. He jumps back in for the charm, but Yawn's ready to go with the killer instinct. She turned over the wall. Yon goes gone. This kid will not lose. A double kill back over to Yon. A triple kill back over to Yon. Whatever else happens, he is stepping up. 9 0 and 2 on the Kaisa with the game on the line. Yon takes over. Flashback to Last Worlds. Disappointing performance from him. He is refusing to lose. Pain Gaming put up such a good fight against Team Liquid, but at the final fight, Yawn makes it happen, and TL takes game one. The charm on the Alistair engage from APA set up beautifully for Yawn. What a team fight for the NA boys. Holy moly, NA versus Brazil is delivering here in game number one. We got more League of Legends coming your way. Coming up next, we're tossing to a break right now. Do not go anywhere. Red Bull gives you wings. And if you're wondering why I move the way I do, I just feel so good.